I lost my mom 2012 to cervical cancer, um, July 17th, um, while I was in school. Um, I actually wasn't going to go back to school, but um, Vivian being who she is, took a flight, came to Miami, because I told her I wasn't coming back. I feel like I didn't have a purpose. I don't know where I'm going, because my mom is not here. Vivian flew down to Miami, told my sister to pack my bags, and she was just like, let's go. Like, demanded it. And she was just like, I made a promise to your mom that you graduate college, and that's what you're gonna do. So for me, it's a, it, I didn't leave right away. You got to know I ain't leave right away. I'm a little stubborn. <laughs> Everyone, welcome to the 411 with Deja Kelly. Popularity of women's sports has been on the rise in the past few years. Without continued support to elevate the game, the space risks losing momentum for the next generation. As a brand committed to covering what matters most, State Farm is stepping up to make sure women's sports continues to grow and thrive. Today, we have the pleasure of welcoming Erica Wheeler of the Indiana Fever into the studio, where we'll discuss the current state of the game, the future, the business side, and everything in between. Erica, thanks for stopping by. How are you feeling today? Thank you for having me. Congrats on your show. This is super dope. Thank you. So congrats. Slam is family, so I'm, I'm always here. Absolutely. You came straight off the plane, so I appreciate that. That's yeah, well. yeah you, got, you got a good one. Bro. Right. You got me. <laughs> I appreciate that. Well, um, again, appreciate you being here. Just kind of want to dig a little deeper into just a little bit of everything. Just mm -hmm. kind of trying to help grow the game in, in as many ways as we can. But yeah. um, this is a way to kind of just share, share your side, share your your um, your kind of take on to, on some things. Um, like I said, of, of, uh, leading up into the future, just mm -hmm. to help give um, some words of advice as best as we can. So um, we were talking a little bit earlier how you're from Miami. Yeah, <laughs> we were talking about we were getting into it how it's. I could never see myself living there. Why? It's too much. It's too much. It's, it's too a lot much. going on. But I, I'll, I'll be good to visit, though. <laughs> I'll take me a little girl's trip to Miami. Yeah. So, um, yeah. How, tell me kind of how that was, like, growing up for you in Miami. Um, for me, I mean, Miami is Miami, as you know. When you think of Miami, you think of beaches. Right. You think of parties. You think in um, exotic things. For me, it's, it, it wasn't that. You know what I mean? Growing up in Miami, um, it was rough. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, for me, that's what made me who I am. That's why um, I grind the way I do, because I want nice things, as you know. Um, and Miami kind of made me who I am when it comes to that, just trying to get away from certain atmospheres. Um, but then you have the other side of Miami where you go across the bridge where it's nice, it's the beaches, it's the parties that I can enjoy now yeah. at this big age. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, no, Miami was, Miami's been good to me. But yeah, kind of growing up there, what kind of got you into basketball and like what was a moment where you really realized like this was something that you could see yourself being successful in and something that you really wanted to put the extra time in the crazy part is like basketball wasn't even my first love like mm -hmm. football was like I love football I have a couple of bros that's in the NFL right now um but as you know that contact sport ain't it <laughs> and as a girl um you young and you play you know part one of football we have the pads on and stuff and as you get older, these, these boys is getting a little stronger. So I think I was around 13 years old when I kind of just got re hit real hard. And I was just like, yeah, I can't do this no more. Yeah. And of course, I played basketball, I played softball, I ran track. I was just in so many things when it came to sports. But I never had like something I was set in stone on. And um, basketball just was the next choice because it allowed me to be Competitive with guys still, because you know how it is when we on the court with guys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we want to go at them. Go a little extra hard. Right. <laughs> so, and, but then also you realize you have some really dope bas women basketball players that can really hoop. And um, as you know, Sylvia Fowles is from Miami, so she's mm -hmm. one of the ones I've looked up to. So just um, going to Edison and watching her game and just like, dang, like, not only the guys is good, like, the girls are good too. Mm -hmm. And Sylvia Fowles was kind of the one that kind of let me know, like, dang. These girls big and they can be really good. Right. So um, after I got hit real hard, I was just like, I need to do something else. Um, and then I just started playing basketball. Like outside, as you know, like at this big age, playing outside on the concrete ain't it. <laughs> but as a kid, um, playing on a double rim is, is for me, it's uh, therapy. Mm. I mean, you outside with nature, when, I mean, then you playing against the guys. Right. When I, I'm a little older than you, yeah. but back then it was cool to meet up with your friends and go on a basketball court and play ball. Yeah. So I think I kind of found the love from that. And then just being around my older cousin mm -hmm. who um, 
kind of took me under his wing because he was in so many sports, mm -hmm. and I just kind of fell in love with it. It's awesome. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah. So with that, like, you, with you kind of being around that your whole life, mm -hmm. what kind of went to your decision to choose Rutgers? Um, that was, that's a little, a little far farther. That away. is far. <laughs> but the crazy thing is, um, my top five. Cause you gotta do this little top five thing that I got going on with college. <laughs> Um, my top five at the time was um, Miami, um, Rutgers, LSU, but um, in Illinois, that's when Don Staley was at Illinois, mm -hmm. and um, who was it? Georgia. Okay. So um, I went on a visit to Georgia, went on a visit to LSU. It was crazy. That football game, I ain't going to lie, almost had me sold. <laughs> so I went there, and I went to Rutgers, my third one. When I got to Rutgers, it felt like family. Mm -hmm. And like I'm big on family. Um, at the time, Chelsea Lee and April Sykes is on the team, and I play AAU with them with Essence. You know about Essence, yes, yeah. okay? Yeah. You know, <laughs> my little championship. Yes. But um, I had them play with them. So when I was there on a visit, it just felt like home. It was yeah. family. Um, as you know, Vivian, she's like a mom. She's super. Um, how can I say? She's warming. You yeah. know what I mean, so the the conversations I was having at Georgia and LSU wasn't the same conversations I was having at. Yeah, Rutgers. It was more yeah. so like you're gonna graduate, mm -hmm. you're gonna know how to talk in front of cameras, you're gonna know how to proper etiquette, Life you're gonna skills, know yeah. basically mm -hmm. it, it was nothing about basketball. And at the time my mom passed away from cervical cancer a long time ago. And um my mom was just like, This one this lady's gonna turn you into a woman. Yeah. Not just a basketball player. Like you're gonna play basketball, but she's gonna turn you into a woman. So um that kinda won my mom over. Right. And for me, like I said, I just felt like family and I felt like if I left without committing I think I would have missed my moment yeah so they they did their thing they yeah. did their big one I done committed yeah. and I, went there, I was only there what two days right day two I ended up committing nothing wrong with that nothing <laughs> like, wrong with that. but it's a feeling like when you know you yeah, know and you it's know, hard you know. to kind of deny that feeling for yeah. sure um so kind of take me through your experiences a little bit once you finally did get on campus like mm -hmm. Because as a college player, it's it's not easy. People think it's, a, oh, yeah, we love, this is my favorite team. We mm -hmm. love watching them play, but they don't know about all the extra stuff we got to go through yeah. to be able to perform like how we do. So, like, tell me, talk about kind of how you balanced the basketball, the academics, the social life, mm -hmm. like, especially being in a place like Rutgers, who, which is an hour away from New York, like, just things like that. Mm -hmm. um, just kind of tell me how you, how you balance that and, like, what was your experience within that? Well, I'll lead with, um, I wanted to transfer. My, my my freshman year, I was just like, this is too much, this is too hard. We we in the gym too long, this is too much. But think about, thinking about like everything I went through to get to this point now, I wouldn't change it. So freshman year, I'm like, I don't gotta listen to my mom, I'm away from home, my mom can't just come and get me. Right. So I'm thinking I'm grown and stuff <laughs> like that. So, but reality hit real quick when you have to go to practice in the morning, then you have to take a two minute shower because you got to rush to get to class. And you got to make sure, I don't know if you have, cl have class checkers where yeah. they check to see the athletes at the class. Sometimes. No, <laughs> ain't no sometimes at Rutgers. It was every every class they check in. So yeah. you, you got to be on time. And because sometimes the class checker were, the class is at 10, class checker leaving at 10.05. Mm. So if you late, you can really be in class, but you just came five minutes late and missed the class checker. And she sent a message to say you weren't in class. Now you got to wake up at 7 a.m. to run the track because you ain't in class. Right. That's what the papers say. Mm -hmm. So just balancing that, like just practice. <laughs> you know how it's women. Shower, you can't, two minutes ain't it, but yeah. you got to do what you need to do. <laughs> right. um, and then class, and it's, it's not like it's only one class. You got like four or five classes, yep. which is super time consuming. Um, and then talking about winning games right. and playing your best basketball. So sometimes sleep get deprived because you got to study. Yep. Then you don't want to study because you want to win this game because it's important. Yep. You know what I mean? So for me, I think yeah. um, my freshman year was a, a challenge, but I think by the time my sophomore year, I was just like, yo, I got to figure out what's my priorities. Right. And I think time management helped a lot. And then just the demand that Vivian had for us. Like she, she wasn't letting us slip up because anytime we did, we got punished for it. And then it wasn't like, just you got punished. If you miss a class, you not running, your whole team running. So now yeah. you got all your teammates mad at you yeah. because you're not doing what you need to do. Mm -hmm. So I think early on, it just kind of clicked like, dang, I don't want to let my teammates down on the court or me not showing up to class because it's going to affect them. Right. So I think early on, I just learned that from her. And that's just who 
who she is. Vivian is a Hall of Famer. Yeah. She's been doing it forever. So um, I think just the punishment kind of just <laughs> shaped me real quick. Right. <laughs> so that kind of goes into, um, you know, I saw you, you went out of your senior year yeah. into the draft. Mm -hmm. Didn't happened. get drafted your first year. Yeah. So how does that carry over to... Like what? What mental advice mm -hmm. did you either give yourself or mm -hmm. that you received from someone else? Mm -hmm. To in that process of, you know, you you hoping that yeah. you know that it happened that year and it just maybe wasn't your time, That's right. and you had to keep telling yourself, wait your turn. Yeah. Like what? What was that self talk or like I said, advice from someone else that you were getting? Well, mine's a little different. Um, I lost my mom 2012 to cervical cancer. Um, July 17th, um, while I was in school. Um, I actually wasn't going to go back to school, but um, Vivian being who she is, took a flight, came to Miami, because I told her I wasn't coming back. I feel like I didn't have a purpose. I don't know why I'm going, because my mom is not here. Vivian flew down to Miami, told my sister to pack my bags, and she was just like, let's go, like, demanded it. And she was just like, I made a promise to your mom that you graduate college, and that's what you're going to do. So for me, it's a, it, I didn't leave right away. You got to know I didn't leave right away. I'm a little stubborn. Um, but looking back at it, it's just like, that's somebody you want to play for who care about, like, not just the basketball stuff. Right. It's like, you, you getting a, a degree. So um, for me, it was just like, basketball was just the outlet. At the time, my 2013, it was just to get through and graduate. Yeah. I need to graduate and I need to pass. Not no bare minimum, <laughs> not no 1.5, yeah. none of that. So for me, the basketball was an outlet. Um, so when I did graduate college, it was more so like I did what you, which I wanted me to do. So I'm cool. I don't want to do nothing else. Right. And at the time, I was dating someone that was in New Jersey. So I was in New Jersey, mm -hmm. and I was working at a um, a drug abuse facility with kids from 10 to 18 years old, like wow. 10 years old, like that's hooked on drugs, wow. and. I, I remember it like it was yesterday. I remember a kid telling me, because I was telling him, I was like, man, I think he was like 13 years, 13 or 14 years old. And I was just like, yo, you got a whole life here. You don't, like, just basically give him the advice. Like, you don't need to be, you know, on drugs. And he was just like, well, I heard you're a basketball player. You're not even playing basketball no more. Yeah. So I'm like, yo, yeah. like, who am I to give you advice when I'm not even doing what I really, truly love? Right. So, like, that kind of opened my eyes. And then, like, a month later, I had a friend that was playing in Puerto Rico was like, look, e, we got a job opportunity, it's not much, and we need a point guard. So I'm just like, how much y'all paying? Right. That's always the question. How much right. y'all He was like, we only paying 200 a week. I'm doing the math, I'm like, that's like 800, 1,000, depending on the month. And at the drug facility, I'm making at least 15 to 2,000 if I do overtime. Yeah. But for me, I'm just like, it's not about the money. Right. This is God telling me, go ahead and get exactly. back to what you love doing. This kid already done pulled your car. You might as well just go ahead and follow it. And that's what I did. Like, I went over to Puerto Rico my first year there, won a championship. In the second year, I made an extra, a little bit more money. It, was, it wasn't 200, it was 500. So I'm just like, okay, I'm moving up in the ranks. I'm a professional athlete. Yeah. So I uh, ended up winning a championship there. And then it's just like my journey just kind of took off from there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, um, ended up finding an agent that I had because at the time she was just like, oh, um, I won't ever say who the agent was. I will never blast them like that because they very respected. And she was just like, well, we can't find you a job. And if you wasn't on a draft board, it's kind of hard to get jobs overseas. She was like, it's better to just get a job. And I was just like, I'm definitely proving you wrong. When, yeah. I, like, when I get in the door, I'm going to prove you wrong. So I ended up firing my agent. And as soon as I signed with him, he signed me in Brazil. And I'm making 3000 a month. So I'm just like, all right, hold on now. Right. We moving. This is going up. So for me, my transition from graduating college to you getting, like, if somebody like you getting drafted, going through the whole draft weekend, I don't know what that's like. Right. I've never been, I've seen it on TV though. Yeah. It gave me motivation, right. but I've never had that experience. Yeah. yeah. Like, so what, what has been something that you've seen the most in maybe rookies coming in, like maybe feeling like they weren't ready? Um, uh, maybe just, I mean, because, again, that transition is insane. Is there something maybe you feel that colleges could do better or impl maybe implement a little more mm -hmm. before these kids try to go to the league? I'll first say the first thing is, like, the travel. Like, as rookie, you just you just don't get used to it after for, like, a – because A.B. and Saxon, they from South Carolina, they win. They get all this special treatment. Like, I'm getting phone calls and – E, can you look at the picture that I sent you to see if this is okay to go to two t through TSA? And it's just like, 
huh? <laughs> this the question you asking? But you can understand. They fly, you guys fly charter, right. you, you top of the line. WB is not like that. Um, but I will say one thing that I feel like college coaches can uh, help you guys with transition is watch the game. Mm-hmm. You have to watch the game. Like, imagine if you're going to play, you play for Indiana Fever, and you're going to play New York Liberty. If you haven't watched film on them, you don't know what they're going to throw at you. Right. So if you haven't watched where you're trying to be, how are you going to adjust to it? Mm-hmm. And you have to also watch and know who in your position, like, who you get, like, it's almost like I get a hit list. That's what I did. I had a hit list. When I'm super nervous playing, I'm like, this the GOAT. And if I can't get the GOAT, boy, I, I, I might be certified. <laughs> so, like, when you plan your, how, how would you say it for y'all, uh, hot role models? Mm. Your role models. <laughs> when you playing against Diana Taurasi, you like, oh, shit, do I, am I like, going to let Diana Taurasi score me or right. I'm going to go at her? Right. I'm going at DT going after yep. the game. I'm a, we can take a picture though, but Absolutely. I'm gonna go at you. Right. So right. I think um, watch the game, and then also like don't be afraid to reach out to WNBA players. We not bougie like that. Yeah. Like we not not gonna talk to you. Like I don't know about the other ones that's high up, but for me, if you ever reach out to me and you yeah. wanna just know a, a little nugget, sure. hit me up. Like I ain't I ain't like that because right. I know what it's like yeah. not to not know. You know what I mean? Right. And then just going there just like. I'm fighting for my life and I don't got no real direction, but I'm gonna fight for my life. Right. But imagine having a little nugget going in, you just like, okay, I'm gonna use this nugget as my baseline and just learn as that's I keep going. Dope. Yeah, no, that's dope for sure. I think being able to, like you said, going in, you had you had Angel. Like yeah. just being able to have that someone, whether they they told you one sentence of help, like, but just carrying that with you, yeah. being able to have that, I think, um, could hopefully, yeah. well, I'm hoping, yeah. <laughs> make that transition a hit little bit up, easier. Man, hit me yeah, up. for sure. Reach Absolutely. Out. So, what impact do you think investments in women's sports from brands like State Farm mm-hmm. kind of can have on us as players mm-hmm. or just women's basketball in general? Um, first off, I think it's super dope that uh, State Farm did a commercial with Arike, yeah. and I think that alone, like visibility, is important. And if you're watching TV and you see Arike on the camera. And yeah, I don't know who she is, but once they say WNBA player, Arike, they, oh, okay. Now, you don't know who I am, but it puts you on notice like, dang, if you really want to know who I am, you're going to go on Google and type it in to find out who I really am. Right. But the visibility that State Farm is nationwide, you know what I mean? So it's like billboards, the marketing team is, does such a great job. So I think for um, companies to, market us in that way and, it, and it's not like it's stale it's, it was super it was funny but yeah. then it was also serious and it was also like basketball related mm-hmm. then it was also related to what state farm represents yeah. so it wasn't like it was just strictly about get your car insurance yeah. no it has some spunk to it so right. i think just having those type of um opportunities for players like arike who has a personality yep. that um for state farm to put at the one of the forefronts of their commercial i think it was super dope and the more visibility we have, the more people will know who we are. Yeah. So. No, for sure. Yeah, no, coverage, all that visibility anyway is definitely super important. So with that, like, how do you think increased coverage Mm -hmm. of women's sports kind of can impact sponsorships, Mm -hmm. fan bases, and even young girls who are Mm -hmm. looking to get into sports who you know are watching at some point? Um, What's the thing that... um, Angel Reese did, what is it? Um, she was in the the, the lotto video. Oh, the, the music Okay, video, yeah. so right. Everybody listen to music. Mm-hmm. You have lotto fans that now is no Angel Reese. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. Like, so you have State Farm Insurance holders, me. I'm one State Farm. <laughs> <laughs> that, that had no idea, like, oh, you into basketball. Oh, you, you guys support basketball. Right. Now the, the who have... State Farm Insurance is on point with it now because now I'm sure it's in the emails. Yep. I'm sure it's getting promoted when people are buying car insurance. So just all those little small nuggets of promotion to even if you don't know, you're going to know because we're putting it in your face right. and we telling you what it is. So I think um, for those nuggets that just keep spreading in that way and, you know, different companies and even people just pushing us in that, yep. in that, in that way that we are dope women that play basketball yep. really good. Right. <laughs> Um, and then also, when you winning, everything is, everything is good. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, um, 
for any company that wants to get into women's on, on whatever level, whether it's soccer, basketball, at least, you know what I mean, that it let the world know like they don't notice too. Right. And this is billion dollar companies. This is yeah. not no, oh, this is a starter up. Yeah. This is billion dollar companies that's been around for a long time that's yeah. supporting the women's game. Right. And it's just like, oh, State Farm, if you're doing it, you might have another company like, hmm, maybe, maybe let me see, should, yeah. go find another player mm -hmm. before they get to that player. Right. It's all about competition at Absolutely. the end of the day, who's trying to be on top. Absolutely. But so. even being able to see that and see growth in that way, being able, like you said, being able to see a Rike and a yeah. State Farm commercial, things like that. Shows we're moving in the right direction. Yeah, we so. definitely moving in the right direction. Because when <laughs> yeah. I seen it, I was like, okay. Okay. Yeah. That's nice. Okay. Well, Erica, this was so much fun. I appreciate you coming in once again and sharing your story. Um, like I said, there were some great nuggets that me as a college player and a lot of other collegiate athletes and just other players out there would love to hear. So I appreciate you taking the time. Thank you for having me. Yeah. And as a reminder, State Farm is there to ensure more coverage for women's sports. We'll have three episodes of this show, so please make sure you tune in to the others. See y'all next time.